Hi, it's Nick Robinson with the latest product from Colour Tree Limited. Uh, really excited about this. They arrived today. Um, it's paper by a company called Taniguchi, and they come in four different themes, which I'll talk you through. So it's 19 centimetres squared, and you get 18 sheets per pack. So it's three sheets of each of six different patterns, and you can see the patterns on the front indicated on the front. Um, makes a change from all the kind of I guess what you call normal stroke boring origami paper which is coloured on one side, plain on the other. Most folders I know like to use paper that's got a bit of something to it, a bit of texture to it, and this indeed has. So I'll show you the different colour ranges. So this is the blue, uh, otherwise known as cool colours. Glamorous colours, pink, red and purple. Bright colours, gold, bronze and orange. And peaceful papers, green, pea green, and uh, pearl. So they're all pretty much the same. The patterns are slightly different. You can see the embossed patterns are subtly different uh, from pack to pack. So you'll need them all, really. Um, so let's open one up. Let's put some to one side. And have a look. So we have the cover sheet. With uh, no model, but uh, it's not a big issue, is it? And here's the paper. So, green, pea green, and pearl, this is called. So let's just go through. So this is pearl. Uh, white on one side and pearly on the other. It's got a, a nice texture to it, which you may not be able to pick up. This one is more of a sort of a, like a leather pattern. Not white on the other side, but subtly different shade. We've got this one, which has got kind of lined, embossed lines on it. Um, that's good. It's kind of dark on one side and shiny on the other, so you've got another choice what to do with it. We've got one here, which has got a nice random texture to it. Um, subtly different on the other side. We've got some more sort of turtly leather colour here with another nice pattern on it. And finally we get these sheets which are, I wouldn't call it green, but that's a really nice subtle embossed texture, shiny on one side and black on the other. And this is probably the most useful for many people to get a nice black with a, a subtle colour. So 19 centimetres, which is big enough for a majority of simple to intermediate models. Um, feels good. So let's have a let's have a go with the sheet. So I've chosen this from the, the blue collection. Oh, by the way, there's a there's a, an offer on Colour Tree where you can get all four packs for a quite a substantial discount. So rather than just buying one or two different. Uh, shades I'd, I'd get the lot personally. So we're going to make a model which uh, I learnt from a booklet by the British Origami Society called Don't Fold Under Pressure. This was put together by Dave Rayner who is heavily involved with the Boy Scout movement and he put together a collection of really simple models which are suitable for scouts or any kind of beginners. And you can buy it on the uh, Colour Tree website, look under the British Origami Society ebooks category. Okay, so it's a kind of a woven thing which looks pretty much the same on both sides, but I kind of favour this as the outside. So we're going to make a preliminary base. So we start by folding in half. I'm going to show you a slightly different way of folding this base. Normally, uh, anyway, give me a second. So we fold in half both ways. So normally you would at this point open out and put in the diagonals on the other side, but what we're going to do is fold the end of the folded edge over to the upper edge. Feels nice and uh, nice and textured. It's good. I'm just looking for my uh, magic. Here it is. My little Hans Werner Gut folder because with paper that's slightly thicker, it's handy just to have it just to make the crease nice and sharp. Then we flip over, as the other light gone out. We'll, uh, we'll plough on. My batteries keep fading on my lights. 
but there's still a bit of sunshine out there. So we fold that up on this side. Now we lift up and open out and flatten in half. And that gives us the preliminary base, which you're probably fairly familiar with. Now we're going to fold the lowest corner up to the top. You can see the crease isn't quite straight, but when you just give it one of those, it just ends up beautiful. Turn over and repeat, bottom point up to the top. I don't use this with, with thinner paper, but this paper is a little bit thicker and my fingers are old and wrinkled, so I need a bit of help. So now we're going to take one of these original raw edges, fold it over to the centre, take it down to the corner and repeat on this side. We don't know who created this model, I don't think it's a very old one, but uh, as ever, once people's names are lost, then we never know who created it. But it's a great model. Flip it over and repeat. Then we're going to take the top flap and fold it back down again. And we're going to do the same on the other side. And the model is complete at this point. So it doesn't seem to be particularly impressive here, but what we do is put a finger in there and a finger in the same pocket on the other side, and we're going to open those out and kind of create a crease between the top points. So we just keep opening them out. Can you see the paper opens up top and bottom, and we're creating a very gentle kind of fold there. Then I I'd, I'd just like to uh, to finish it off by just pinching these ears a little bit and try to make that crease in the middle a bit more firm then it looks like it's got a couple of ears sticking up and that is the model um, it kind of opens its mouth a little bit um, it's a, a dragon's head it's known as and of course if you're at all interested in dragons <coughs> you know that they need eyes so my friend Ricky Donerke always recommends using uh, googly, eye, googly eyes for these things but I prefer to just do a little pen. I'm really good at drawing circles. And that just makes it a little bit more evident what it is. So, dragon heads. This is made from Taniguchi paper, which you can buy from colourtreelimited.co.uk, the official supplier to the British Origami Society. And uh, if you can fold this, then send us a little photo of it ideally using our paper. Um, let's bring the packs back in. Here's the last one. So I made a few other models just to try it out. So this one is um, Tokien. It's called All the World's a Stage or a hexagonally bisected cube, which I've always liked. Toki was a, a good friend of mine. Much missed. I thought I'd try some of the paper for wet folding, which is where you dampen the paper before you fold it and during, and it should kind of set. So it seems to have worked. Papers, when you're putting in curved forms, normally the paper doesn't keep that position, but here you can see it's kind of settled. So that's a toad design of mine, which I'm kind of quite proud of. This is a pair of pincers by Ennio Capra. Um, and it's kind of unique in that you open sideways and it moves in the other direction. That's quite quite an odd uh, movement for origami. Anyway, pincers by Neo Capra, and lastly, this is a model of mine called Baby Bird. So it's a bird on its nest, and it wants feeding, so it's kind of going mama, mama. So I tried wet folding again, and that's worked quite well. So you can see I use the, uh, see I use the shiny side for this one. But I use the sort of matter for that, so inside you can see it's shiny, um, just to see how they work. So I've had a lot of fun with these packs of paper, and I think they're going to sell like uh, the proverbial hot cakes. So uh, do get yourself along to colourtreelimited.co.uk and look for Taniguchi under new products. Thanks a lot, and I'll see you soon, and I promise to get my lighting batteries sorted out. <laughs>